Hey, Luke, I'm so honored to have you on this program today. I really um, was um, intrigued to know more about you and how you connected with Iran Alive Ministries. And um, what a great heart you have for Iran and what you had um, to share with me the, the other day when we had some time to talk about your connection with us and all that. You said something that uh, was very interesting to me and I wanted, I felt like I owe it to our audience not to have you on one of these episodes here and have you yourself share it with them. So why don't you briefly um, talk to us about um, who you are, how you connected with Iran, and then we'll go from there. Yeah, well, uh, I'm a child of God, yes, amen. first and foremost, amen. Uh, from California, grew up in California, was there my whole life, I actually just recently moved to Texas, and so happy, happy to be here with you. Um, man, the Lord has just taken me through a completely transformative journey, Yeah. And part of that is generosity, around generosity, but not just regular generosity, but sacrificial generosity. That's the, awesome. The kind that you know, advances the kingdom, yeah. right? And so I have, I mean, there's no better way to put it than I have a bunch of Persian friends. Some yes. of my best friends are Persian. Uh -huh. And so I got to know the culture early on before my walk with Jesus. I got to know the culture of Iran. Yes. And then that just continued. And so the way it sort of transitioned was as I became closer and closer and closer to Jesus. And I started learning his heart mm -hmm. for the nations, yes. right? For me, for you, for all the nations out there. Yes. That's when he started to sort of gear me towards Iran. I said, oh, Luke, I love this yes. place. And my heart started to break as well. And I'm thinking, Lord, I love, I haven't even been, I love this place and I love your people. Yeah. And so that's how he started to gear me towards a heart for Iran. Right. Right, that's awesome. Well, um, tell me, I want I want you to walk us through a journey that the Lord has taken you. Obviously, this um, generosity and sacrificial generosity that you're talking about today is a result of continuous time, one-on-one -on -one fellowship with the Lord, and the revelation of we as believers are called to be generous, are, are called to be like our creator, did not come to you overnight, I'm sure. No. Could you talk to us um, about this journey that you have been ta uh, taking with the Lord? Yeah, absolutely. We are who we associate with, yes. right? And so it really started like any other journey mm -hmm. in Christianity, which is I'm just spending time yes. with our Lord and Savior, mm -hmm. right? And so I spent hours with him every single day just saying, Lord, like, mm -hmm. what do you want from me? Mm -hmm. How can I serve you? Yeah. You know, just tell me more about the way you see the world. Tell me more about the way you see Iran. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about the way you see individual states. And so spending a lot of time with the Lord started to change my ways, right? Because I became more associated with his ways, right? right. So the, the verse is, uh, teach me your ways, mm -hmm. O Lord, so that I may rely on your faithfulness, yes. right? Yeah. Uh, the Israelites knew God's deeds. Mm -hmm. Moses knew his ways, mm -hmm. okay? And so the Lord started to teach me his ways and started to break my heart in certain areas and started to, at the same time, blossom gifts. And, and generosity is just one of those gifts, right. Right? right? And so he started to blossom these gifts and sort of cultivated, I mean, there's so many farmer analogies in the Bible, right? He started to cultivate yes. this in me and I started to take little steps of faith, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Now I understood that tithing was important. Right. I understood that there was a, a sort of minimum, right? right? You know, that the Lord wants us to partake in. Yes. What I didn't understand was how healthy yes. that tithe was for our relationship. So my relationship with my groom, my relationship with Jesus, right? That relationship has uh, safeguards around it, yes. but it also is meant to be fostered and stirred. And tithing is one part of that. Yes. But then we need to remember who God is, Amen. right? God is a generous mm -hmm. God. Those are his ways. Yes. As we start to spend more time with him and we become like him, you will find that you become more generous. One of my Persian friends actually would say a praying church is a pain church yes. because your heart starts to become geared yes. towards what his heart is geared to. And so that then starts to manifest and the way it did in my life was it started to go from little steps towards big steps mm -hmm. 
towards sacrificial generosity mm -hmm. that says, I can be a part of advancing God's kingdom, right? I can fuel this kingdom movement. I can fuel the vision that Jesus has for the world. And I don't have to quit my job and move to inland China. In fact, mm. I can be a missionary from my job. I'm just the hands while they're the feet. Right? Like Paul says, there's different parts of the body of yes. Christ, right? And we all have purpose. Jesus' final prayer was that we would all be in unity, right? That we would have unity. His kids would have unity. Well, I think part of that is the body operating in unison, yes. right? So the hands, the feet, the ears, the nose, all moving in a direction that is pushing the kingdom forward and bringing about this vision that Jesus had for the world, but also the vision that he had for us, his people, who he's entrusted to advance his kingdom. Absolutely. Does that make sense? It does make sense. Um, so you mentioned um, some areas that I want to circle back and talk more about. You mentioned that you didn't overnight um, get this revelation from mm. the Lord that sacrificial generosity is the way to go for you. Um, you started taking steps of faith, little baby steps of faith. And then as you become, as you became one with God and you're becoming mm. one with God, he is then showing you his vision for mm. your life, his vision for the church, his vision for the expansion of the kingdom. And he wants to use you to equip the church. Mm. He wants to use me to equip the church. Um, this is a very sensitive topic we're talking about here. I was reading a book actually on the very topic and it was saying um, if every Christian in the world was a giver, just we're talking about tithes, not even generosity, not even sacrificial generosity. If every Christian believer gave their tithes to the church, we would not have any issues like we would have mm. all the wells in Africa spewing water, not even having to dig the wells and get them water and all that. That's not even on the scale that you're talking about. The reason I'm touching on that is because it's a topic that it's that is very controversial here in America and also in Iran. So Iran Alive Ministries is a ministry to equip, empower, embolden Iranians through the gospel. And giving is one of the areas that hasn't really become very, very comfortable to talk about or very freely to talk about mm. God's vision and heart for, for us as believers to see giving as an opportunity that we get to give to the church for the expansion of the kingdom. Mm. A lot of people do have issues with that area. I'm talking about my American friends. I see them that that's, that's a sensitive issue. You know, they're, they're like, Lily, we'll go to church with you. But when that offering plate comes around, it just makes us feel uneasy. Can we take that off? Can we go to a church that doesn't so openly talk about giving mm -hmm. so that we don't feel uncomfortable going to church? Mm -hmm. um, I hear that from my American friends. I see that my Iranian friends struggle with that. And unfortunately, because the heart is not one with God, um, I see a lot of them are also having some financial each issues as a result mm -hmm. of it because the, the, the giving is a principle that the Word of God over and over and over talks to us about um, so that if we are obedient and we have a heart to honor God, we can also reap the benefits of it. Mm -hmm. the, the benefits are not the heart of the issue. The heart of the issue is our heart condition. Mm. What would you say to those that um, feel uncomfortable about the issue of giving? Generally speaking, not Americans or Iranians. Generally, I want you to just look at the audience and just talk to us. Like, what is it that makes people? Did you ever? First of all, let me ask you this: Did you ever feel this way when you first started going to church? Was the issue of giving 
an uncomfortable issue for you or did it just come naturally to you like an act of obedience, an act of honoring the Lord? How was that for you? Yeah, a lot of good questions there. So. <laughs> I know. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I'll do my it was best. definitely a loaded question. Let's start with how was it for you when you first started going yeah. to church? So, I mean, boy, the culture of the kingdom of Jesus yes. is countercultural. Yes. Okay, so everything feels very uncomfortable. Yes. Baptism is particularly uncomfortable. I thought, man, this is so strange. Like, right. why? Right? right? And so giving isn't any different, right? right. It. it, it Jesus is full of, what are they, paradoxes? It's yes. better to give than to receive, yes. right? Yeah, you, you have to die in order to live. Yes. This is the upside-down kingdom of God. Right. So, yes, absolutely it felt uncomfortable. Okay. okay. Now, I think that there are two concerns that I see in the church, one of which is we don't want to talk about giving at all, right? right? Because I guess there's some sort of religious fear around right. talking about it. Right. Don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Right. Okay. Possibly that started from a good heart. Where it's gone is we're just going to shun this gift right. entirely and therefore not allow it to breathe, right? right? This plant isn't going to grow uh, tucked away in a, in a closet, right? It right. needs to be out, it needs to breathe, it needs to be fostered, and it needs to have souls in which to cultivate itself in, right? right? Absolutely. Now, the other piece that I'll mention just on that verse is uh, right before, right after that verse, Jesus says, well, when you pray, don't pray out in the streets mm -hmm. like the hypocrites do. Right. They've received their reward in full. Instead, go into a closet, shut the closet door and go and pray to your father who sees you in private and you'll be heard. Well, was Jesus talk saying that we should never pray mm -hmm. together like, like we just did mm. before the show, right? We don't just go in the closet and pray. Right. We pray in community. Right. Okay, so what was Jesus really after? Mm. It's the heart, Yes. right? And so that addresses the first religious piece that we see, yes. right, from the, the, the church today, particularly in America, is we don't want to talk about this at all. So inevitably what happens is that gift just dies, right. which is what you describe, right? We're not giving as a church. I've heard numbers to the tune, and it depends what study you read, right. but I've heard numbers to the tune of one, one and a half percent right. of income is given right. to church or missionary organizations. Okay? Now, the other piece of it really speaks to this heart issue right. that you're talking about, which is, well, I don't want to become transactional right. with God when it comes to my giving. Um, maybe from a good place, you're saying, well, I don't want to give to get, right? I don't want to give so that God owes me exactly. something, right? Maybe that's where your heart is, mm -hmm. and so you just don't give at all. Right. Or it becomes, well, God just wants to use me for right. my money. Right. Both scenarios are very unhealthy, right. and I did wrestle with all of the above. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The antidote, the an antidote is always intimacy yes. with God. The an antidote is always spending time with the Lord yes. and seeing how He feels about a subject. Lord, uh, He He can handle our questions, right? Exactly. Lord, are you using me for this money? Right. Mm -hmm. Lord, is this going to the to the right place? Like, right. The Lord wants to be collaborative with you. Yes. He wants Amen. to grow you. He wants to spend time with you and say, Hey, Luke, here's why. I'm doing this. Or, hey, Luke, I've got such a heart for Iran. I'm like, Lord, I've never been to Iran. I don't know anything about Iran. Let me start to show you why I have such a heart for this nation. And so intimacy is always the key with yes. the Lord in both scenarios. Yes. And especially when I, when I look at the opportunity mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. United States or the West, um, but probably in Iran as well, I see potential for massive growth. And yes, it's because I want to see the kingdom advance. Yes, it's because I want to see the gates of hell knocked down. Yes, it's because I want to see many millions come to Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's part of it. But the backside of that is I want to see the church and those that call themselves followers of Jesus know him intimately and right. know his ways, right? Like that's, that's how we're going to have a strengthened church. And Candidly, we're not going to advance the kingdom right. very well if we're not in that place. Right. Absolutely. Uh, you also mentioned about, you know, we're taught um, in, in church and all that. If we want to bless the nations, just give some of your money to the missions um, so that it would be feel it would be. Uh, the, the work will be accomplished in nations. Mm. Um, your specifically um, are very much connected with the nation of Iran. Why do you think 
um, with your intimate relationship that you are having with the Lord and you have heard specifically about Iran and how you could be hands and feet of Jesus, you could be um, doing a work that is going to be significant. Why Iran is the nation that God put in your heart? Yeah, it's a great question. And but also I feel inclined to say to, to the audience yes. that we are all a work in progress, yes. right? My relationship with Jesus needs work. Yes. Because his word does say that I'm a bride and he's a groom. Yes. It's like a marriage. It needs some work. Yes. Okay. Why Iran for me? So I, I gave the background of it, but when I look at Iran today, Oh my goodness, like look at, even just, if you look at it just from a finance standpoint, which I am inclined to think towards, a uh, return on investment. Right. Right? That's good. The Lord is spending a lot of time yes. in Iran. The Lord is investing a lot in Iran. The Lord is doing something very abnormal yes. in Iran. And and the stories are endless. The Some of my favorites are around the dreams for an entire cities, right, in a given night of Jesus, right. right? So the Lord has an interesting heart for Iran. And all I can say, I, I don't totally understand right. why why Iran, why now? Sure. You know, because sometimes, hey, I say, Lord, why not, why not United States right, exactly. right now? Yes. And you know, it, it's, it's his prerogative, right. but he has blessed the mission kingdom work in Iran yes. in a way that is just very different. His hands on it, there's a special hand of favor on Iran. And so when I see uh, giving towards ministries geared towards Iran, focused on Iran, boy, I mean, the fruit is endless. That's a, this is what I'm seeing is yes. massive amount of fruit. Now, that does not mean always that we only give to areas where the, the hand of the Lord is on, right? right. A, at a given moment, like it is Iran. Yes. Okay. Sometimes it's 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 reaping what's yes. been sown. Yes. Sometimes it's tilling the ground and preparing the ground. Yes. This is where your relationship with God needs to come into play. Absolutely. Lord, what am I called to? Am yes. I called to be a part of this massive reaping that's happening in Iran, or? Do you want me to play the long game in yes. some other areas? Yes. Right? Because as a church, we do need to think about the long game yes. as well. We need to build uh, foundational and long-lasting uh, and self-sustaining models that bring the kingdom and its advancement into areas that aren't experiencing this crazy move of God like Iran. But to answer your question... That's what's so special about Iran to me is I can't help but be a part of something so exciting and so um, uh, like leaps and bounds sure. kingdom advancement uh, so obviously. Yes. Right? And it plays such a key role in the world and I won't go into it, but that particular geographic region, both biblically, but also at this very moment, it ha has a lot to say yes. about uh, geopolitics and the way the world interacts with one another. And I believe it's probably the same in the spirit too. And so that area just has an anointing on it and I want to be a part of it. <laughs> Thank you. Absolutely. We all want to be in the center of where God is doing a great work. And there is so much work that could be accomplished if the funding was there. And so I pray, my prayer is always for all of us just to be so in tune with what the Holy Spirit is is asking every each one of us believers to do so we can also be obedient to his call mm -hmm. and to his voice to be able to accomplish the work that he wants to accomplish through each one of us. So you mentioned about sacrificial generosity. We talked about, you know, why is it important to give and how important it is uh, for our condition of our heart to be where we need, where God wants it to be so that we don't just give to receive, mm -hmm. you know, we don't just um, do things out of selfish, you know, desires and um, misinterpretation of the word of God and whatnot. But where, where do we go from baby steps of obedience towards giving mm -hmm. to sacrificial generosity? Yeah, I, I think the first part of it is understanding who you are, mm -hmm. right? Who mm -hmm. you are in Christ, but then also understanding what's yours and what's not yours. Right. I am a steward of Amen. what God has given me. Mm -hmm. I do not own this money, mm. right? He allows me to steward. So that's the first place that I would recommend anybody start. And it's where I started was this recognition of, 
my goodness, like I am a child of God. I have been bought at a price yes. right? in, a, in a sacrificial yes. purchase as well, Amen. right? So a heavy price. And so recognizing who I am, right? The, the, the value that the Lord sees in me, because he paid a high price, he must value me quite a bit, yes. right? And so now that I am his, right? Because I live my life unto God, Amen. right? And, and I think of the verse that says, um, do nothing out of selfish ambition, mm -hmm. but in humility count others more important than yourselves. Yes. It's very difficult for us in the West. It's very mm -hmm. difficult for me constantly. Mm -hmm. I have to repent constantly for going against that. And so when I recognize uh, the purpose that my money is actually for, the purpose that my life is actually for, things change, right? Mm -hmm. Then it's not, well, the Lord gets my 10%. And then that, that's a tax, mm -hmm. right? That feels like a tax, yeah. right? And it feels religious, right? Mm -hmm. And nothing wrong with if you're doing you know, the 10%, but I do think that's the bare minimum. And I think, it, again, it's like we get to, it's like you have to, yes. you get to, Amen. because the Lord has so much for you as you start to press the boundaries. And it's a sweet smelling incense when you start to sacrifice unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. They did it differently in the Old Testament. Now the opportunities are endless. We're free to sacrifice that way. We're free to, instead of going 10%, 90 mine, mm -hmm. why mm -hmm. not switch it? Yes. Why not do the opposite, right? Why, why not allow me to live on my 10% and the rest goes to the Lord? Mm -hmm. Now, everybody's different, yes. right? Everybody's gonna be capable of different things. Everybody's gonna have a different financial scenario, but Jesus addressed that too, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. uh, the woman who gave, the widow who gave two coins, right? Yes. Remember, she gave two coins and he said, she gave more mm -hmm. than all the rest of you. Mm -hmm. Jesus thinks differently, Absolutely. right? But what he, the, the, the language that he thinks is one of sacrifice, yes. right? And so Amen. we're all called to be mm -hmm. kingdom forwarders, right? We're all called to be missionaries in some sense, right. but we're going to do it differently, right? And we're going to have different passions. And by the way, this is just generosity. We've right. got other gifts too. Right. And my focus does tends to be tend to be towards finances, right? right? There are other ways to be generous, right? right? And so I, I know there are those of you out there who are saying, well, I don't have money. Easy for you to say, you know, you, you've got a full-time job, right? right? And I, I would say that, we've, first of all, we've got to get away from this scoring mentality, mm. mm -hmm. right? Because that just breeds shame all over. Jesus addressed it with the widow. But also your generosity might look different. Right. right? Uh, I think part of it will be finances, but it could be your time, mm -hmm. you know, and your talent, talent. and hospitality, mm -hmm. and, and, you know, all of these things that yeah. Christ calls us to. And so I, I think that's, that's where I want to see the church make a transition is less of, oh, I have to pay the temple tax. Right. More of, I get to sacrifice and be a part right. of this journey that, that Jesus was a forerunner on, yes. right, of sacrifice. And I get to be more like God, who is sacrificially, for God so loved the world, he gave mm -hmm. his only son, yes. right? And so I get to be in line with that. I get to enjoy the fruits of the kingdom advance. I get to watch all of this cool stuff happening in Iran. Right. I get to be a part of Iran Alive and see the kingdom advanced in this direction. I get to read stories online that say, here's how God met me through Iran alive, right. right? This is just the joy. I mean, this is, I think, probably what God sees when he watches us doing things like sacrificial generosity. He says, wow, what a joy. Yeah. What a joy to watch Lily give. And we get to participate yes. in that joy as well. Like, Lord, look at what you did. It's like David says, like, who am I? And what is your servant that right. you treated me and my family this mm -hmm. way? Mm -hmm. And so you get to watch out of thankfulness and a right focus on right. Jesus, you get to watch the the kingdom advance. And that is a grace, but also a joy. Absolutely. Does that, that answer the question? I absolutely <laughs> okay. did. Um, and you mentioned something that is great. I know the topic of our discussion is uh, specifically on giving, uh, financial in financial giving, but being generous with our time, being generous with our... Tr um, uh, talent, being generous in smiling at mm. one another, being generous to be kind to one another. These are the attributes that we can only draw 
from spending time with the Lord, from having that fellowship with the Lord um, and being sacrificial about it. You mentioned something about um, the, the woman um, that brought two coins and that was all she had. And, and Jesus talked about sacrificial giving right then and there and the importance of it. We don't talk much about in, at least in the West, much about sacrificial giving. Why? Because we hear constantly how people are struggling with giving that 10 percent that you mentioned about you know it's like a it's like paying taxes and all that and they're like well i don't have enough that's always that's the that's a common story we we always hear i don't have enough for my own needs let alone paying um, my 10% of tithes or more, uh, more than that for offering. Mm -hmm. How would you um, give advice to people that say, I don't yet have enough. How do you expect me to live on 20%, 10% like you said, and give 90% or 80% to the Lord, uh, to the, the expansion of the kingdom? How would mm -hmm. you approach that? If someone comes to you and says, I don't have enough, Luke, it's easy for you to live on 20%, 10% and give to the expansion of the kingdom, um, the rest of it. How would you approach that? Yeah, I think the first thing is pressure's off. Right, exactly. <laughs> right? You don't have Thank to you. live on 10% while 90% goes away. Right. We're all going to be very different, right? Yes. And you are a unique vessel of yes. the Lord's, right? And he's yeah. put you in a unique scenario with unique finances, with a unique family, et cetera, et cetera. And so... I would say that you don't have to be this way, and we are in Christ, yes. so shame is gone, yes. <laughs> right? Amen. Romans 8, 1. Amen. So that is, that is gone, so let's just release, like I, I release people of that. Yes, amen. Um, now, what if somebody comes to me and says, you know, well, I can't do the 10%, mm -hmm. okay? Then my advice becomes the same as the Lord's, which is test me in this, mm. okay? And that's I good. know that's not gonna be easy. Yes. Putting the flesh to death is not easy, nor is it pleasant, by the way. And God does ask for a cheerful giver. He loves Amen. a cheerful giver, yes. right? But that does not mean that it's always easy. That means that from my heart, I say, Lord, like you are my joy, yes. right? And so I'm going to give to you, even though I don't understand it, even though this doesn't make sense to me, even though, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. I'm going to give because I love you and I trust you and I have faith to see, see what you're going to do. Yes. What are you going to do, God, right? Yes. Now, uh, remember, Jesus said, for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. Amen. Right? There was joy at the Amen. heart of it. But don't tell me that that didn't hurt. Right. Right? That was deep sacrifice. That's so good. But there is joy before and after. There is joy. An undercurrent. Uh, joy doesn't always mean happiness. Right. Right? The undercurrent of joy is our sustainability. And so that's where I would start to offer advice, if I'm in a place to offer advice to people, it's start to experience the joy of what mm -hmm. God is doing in the kingdom. Spend more time with missionaries. It's kind of my secret. Right. I like spending time with missionaries mm -hmm. because they are living sacrificially right. in every way possible, right? And watching the stories from Iran Alive and spending time with you and, and hearing the testimonies of people with very real sacrifice yes. in their lives. When I start to watch that and I start to participate that in that and I start to let it be absorbed in me, yes. I start to change and I start to want to be a part of that sacrificial lifestyle. I start to want mm. to advance the kingdom uh, using the sacrifice of my finances or my time or my home. Trust me, these are things I totally str struggle with, yes. right? Yes. I, and the Lord's improving me constantly. But my advice is that, you know, the sacrifice is not just for the, the missionary in inland China. Mm -hmm. The sacrifice is not just for... Uh, the Muslim choosing Jesus in Iran, right? Right. The sacrifice is for every single one of us. Mm -hmm. Jesus has made that clear, but that sacrifice is going to look differently, right. right? It's the Lord has been reminding me constantly: the first will be last, right, and the last will be first. Mm -hmm. That's important, right? We're meant to be servants, just like Jesus. Like He came to serve. Yes. If there's anybody that you think like shouldn't be serving? It's Jesus, right? Yes. And so with that in mind and knowing that the assets and the, the, the finances and the time and the home, knowing that these are his and knowing that we've got a job to do, mm -hmm. AKA the Great Commission, yes. you're gonna start to behave in a certain way. Now, 
where you'll find roadblocks, and I've dealt with this many times with the Lord, and I've repented over it, is it can very easily become twisted because mm -hmm. money is a fickle thing, yes. right? It's a tough thing. It can be thorny. And the desires of the world are, in fact, called thorns right. by God, right? It's like, you know, your faith grew up, but it was twisted by the desires of these worlds, choked by the right. desires of the world. But we need to remember it's the love of money, right? And uh, th that, is, that is the root of all evil. And so if money is a tool, then all of a sudden, I do like to think I'm using the enemy's weapon against him, right? Like right. money is just a tool. It's just an avenue. Right. And I get to use it to advance the kingdom. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. Because my desires mm -hmm. are in line with his, yes. right? And so anyway, getting back to what I was going to no, repent of, uh, what, what I've had to repent of many times is I flip-flop mm -hmm. things, right? And all of a sudden I'm asking the Lord to serve my career, mm -hmm. right? Or to serve my money. He said, well, Lord, you know, bless me in this, bless me in that, bless. And he wants to bless you. But when you start to use the Lord as a means to forward your idol and that idol becomes Lord, right. then we get into a dangerous spot, right? Absolutely. And that's certainly when I'm speaking to people in the West, especially folks with, with money, mm -hmm. That is a very dangerous place to be. Sure. You must repent of that. Jesus is Lord over everything. Like the Lord is master Amen. over everything, everything that I own, including my money. And so it's important to, to, to use that. But then even further on the topic of using money, right? Mm -hmm. You can almost think of it almost like, like casting your fishing line. If, if my heart is where my money is, or sorry, rather, where your treasure is there, your heart will be also. Maybe there are areas that I want improvement on, right? right? Maybe I want to be more focused on Iran. Right? Right. I just want to say, Lord, like, make me more mm -hmm. loving, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Then I can use money and cast it in a certain direction in advance of actually having a heart for that area right. and watch my heart grow for that area. Right. Does that make sense? Absolutely, like a seed that you're actually sowing in the mm. soil. Um, you mentioned so many different things, and you're, while you're talking, you touch on so many different principles that are biblical for every believer that we, we all need to live out and abide by. And I think the heart of it boils down to it is almost impossible, well, the Word of God says in Hebrews, it is impossible to please God without faith. Mm -hmm. So for the person that is like, well, I don't have enough to make ends meet, how do you expect me to give sacrificially? Um, we can also talk about, you know, it is impossible to please God without faith because mm -hmm. then he said, test me with this. Why, yeah. did, why did the Lord say, test me with this? Why didn't he say, test me with other things, Luke? Mm -hmm. Wow. Whew. I think that's so good. I think probably because, man, money is so tied to faith, right? If I don't have it, yes. I worry. And Jesus says, don't worry. Yes. Right? Look at the birds. Look at the flowers. Yes. Right? Money is so closely tied to our heart, as I said. I think Jesus worries about that stuff. Right. You, you, know, you know what I mean when yes. I say worry. Totally. He, yes. he's, he's concerned about, about that us. stuff. Mm -hmm. He's concerned about us. And he knows the potential that money, the potential damage, yes. but also impact yes. that it can have on the kingdom, on the earth but also my own life, yes. right? Yes. And so I think, you know, when God is asking us to test us in this, when he's asking us to do these things, what he's really worried about is, is our faith. What he's really asking from us is, hey, like a closeness yes. between us. What he's really concerned about, about is the whole reason that Jesus died for our sins, yes. right, was so that there wouldn't be any space between any enmity between us and God. And God, yes. That's it. And he didn't want money to be come between either of you. Yes. Right? He, mo he knows that money can. And so can time. So can a career. So can a spouse. Like yes. All of these things can come between us and God. Absolutely. But money is one of those things where, you know, people look at it and say, well, how am I supposed to survive? You yes. know, all of a sudden you see the flesh start to act out when, when money starts to get hit. Right? And you say... Lord, if you were really here, if you really cared for me, this is original sin, right? Like if the Lord really, really. cared yep. for you, right? And 
man, you just see time and time and time again. God wants to exercise our faith. I mean, yeah. there's so many corollaries between the human body and our faith. I've noticed this is just, yes. it's just Luke talking. W muscle has to break down mm -hmm. in order to grow. Right? Yes. It has to be tested. It has to be taken to a point where probably your muscle is saying, I don't want it anymore. Like, right. no more. I don't like this. Please stop. Yes. But it grows as a result. Uh, I mean, the, the scientists in the room will have to check me on this, but I think a broken bone grows mm -hmm. back twice as strong. Right. Why is that? Like, the Lord thinks about these kind of things. Wow. And he thinks about these things uh, when it comes to our faith. Yes. Right? And so he's intimately and almost over the top, he has prioritized looking at your generosity of money, time, etc. when it comes to fostering our faith. Right. He cares about it. Yes. Right? He cares about those details Absolutely. of our life. Absolutely. Absolutely. And he can be trusted with it. He's Amen. trustworthy. Amen. And like you mentioned, he is more concerned. And we're sitting here, two believers sitting here talking about the issue of giving and how our heart is to really unravel this um, issue of giving from the perspective of the Lord. Mm. And really, you touched it very greatly. You mentioned the heart of the Lord is not so much about that giving, but the heart of the Lord is about the condition of our heart, where your mm. treasure is, there will be your heart also. Mm. He is after our heart. He wants people that are after his own heart. And so it is really like, we're talking about giving, we're, we're you know, while it's important to honor the Lord with everything that we have, with our wealth, with our first fruit of our income, with everything that he blesses us with, and that comes from a place of faith and, and a good heart. But ultimately, he wants our heart to be where his heart is. Amen. And so it all boils down to having that fellowship with the Lord, having that one-on-one -on -one personal relationship with the Lord to know him intimately mm -hmm. and to really seek after what his heart wants and we can be obedient for the rest of what he's asking us to do. Amen. Amen. And he's after people, yes. right? He's always been after people. He's after Amen. me and there are many who don't know him. Yes. And he's after them. He cares about those people. Yes. And so... Absolutely. We get to participate in that. Look, I know that you are anointed for being generous, not just with your finances, with your time, with your talent, with the way you smile at others, the way you believe in others, the way you are. Just you, your presence carries uh, the essence of generosity. Mm -hmm. And I, I'm so honored to know you, to be... Um, totally like um, in this you know, ministry together, I feel like you have so, it's such a great significant part in Iran Alive Ministries that we're, um, it's like we're partnering together, we're, we're carrying mm. out the mission that God has for Iran Alive Ministries together. I really want to ask you to pray for all of us, pray for the audience that are watching this program right now to really have that anointing of be more generous in mm. every area of our, our, of our lives. For all of us, will you pray for us so that yeah. we all would receive what you have? Absolutely, <laughs> happy to. Amen. Father, we love you. We love you so much. Thank you, Lord, for this time. Thank you for the opportunity to share your heart Lord, and what you've placed on my heart, Lord, I thank you for all that you're doing across the nations, Lord, but especially Iran, Lord. I thank you for the listeners, Lord, and the audience who you've placed in front of us to hear this message, Lord. And Lord, we submit to you humbly. We submit to you in all things, Lord, and we submit to you in generosity. Lord, bless the audience. Bless these people, Lord. Bless the hearers, Lord. Bless those coming to know you in Iran. Bless those in the United States and the West, Lord, with generosity, Lord, with a sacrificial generosity that you have anointed the world with, Lord, that you have allowed us to partake in, Lord, in this world. Lord, I pray for submissive hearts, Lord. I yes. pray for an excitement, O oh, Lord, to advance the kingdom. Lord, break boredom off the church, Lord. I pray that you take complacency off of the church, Lord. I pray that you take Amen. individualism to some extent, Lord. And I pray that you take um, a sort of um, 
you know, focus on just me and what I want, Lord, mm -hmm. off of the church, Lord. I pray that you start to grow us, Lord, in mercy for others. Grow us in love for our neighbor. Grow us in love for other nations, Lord. And I pray that you would foster, Lord, and uh, teach us to excel, Lord, in the area of generosity, Lord. So to, to, to the extent, Lord, that you've anointed me with this, as Lily says, Lord, I bless the listeners, Lord, with in, in, in the same anointing and the gift that you've given me um, and to exceedingly greater measure, Lord. I pray that you give them a double portion, Lord, of a heart for generosity, Lord, and an intimacy with you, Jesus, that, that we would know you intimately and that you would know us and that we would know your ways, Lord. And so I just pass that, Lord, to all the listeners and I, I pass it off, Lord, and I ask you to anoint it. I ask you to bless them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for your time, Luke. Thank you for having me. This is fun. Thank you. <laughs>